All right, my friends. I hope you had a happy Halloween. Aaron here bringing you a November 1st astrology update. Now, we had a big eclipse happen last week uh, on Saturday, this past weekend. And uh, there's a lot of downloads, a lot of information that's come up about this eclipse, where we're headed, where we're at right now, and where we're moving toward this month. Now, the eclipse energy, it's not something that just happens on a single day. And then we move on to the next day and and now it's a completely different story, a completely different lesson. There's a lot with these eclipses to unpack, to unravel, that this energy sticks around with us for about six months. So there's a lot that's still here to unpack. And a lot of interesting downloads have come in for me on how to translate and communicate the astrology to you. Uh, or just in general, how to, how to, for myself, not just for others, but, but certainly for myself as well. And, and there's some uh, kind of epiphanies that had happened on Saturday continuously after I put out the first video into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And I wanted to put these videos out or is this video out. Um, and, and I'll share that's the first thing I'll say is like patience with ourselves. You know, I wanted to put this video out on Monday and it was just like Monday didn't work out Then I wanted to put it out on Tuesday, but it's like Halloween. It's like we're not talking about astrology right now on Halloween. There's got a lot of other stuff going on. So I waited till today. And then, of course, when I did, thankfully, a lot of information came in that I'm really excited to share with you about. So patience, you know, where I'm even I'm, I'm kind of hard on myself, double earth sign uh, can be hard on myself. And we all can be hard on ourselves at times to to deliver, to to produce, to create something. Or I want to be further ahead in my process right now than where I'm at. And sometimes that rest, you know, the Buddha quote, it's like, you know, letting the, the water settle. But, you know, the, the murky water settle before taking a sip, just giving it patience that time is sometimes exactly what we need. Now, there's something I say quite often in, when I sit and talk about astrology, and I say, Earth is my body, water is my blood, air is my breath, and fire is my spirit. This is, I believe, a Native American, or honestly, I have no idea where that comes from, but it's certainly true for me uh, and many of us. So in this conscious awareness that Earth is my body, and when we talk about material possessions here in the sign of Taurus, when we have Jupiter and Uranus, and of course our Sun, Mars, and Mercury are all opposing Jupiter and Uranus right now in the sign of Taurus. Um, what is the very first possession? We talk about possessions, material possessions, material goods, our home, you know, something I talked about on Saturday, our home. The home, you know, making sure that our home is safe, secure. I have a secure roof over my head. Well, today is, is I got an interesting, interesting perspective on that. What's the first, the very first possession you received being born into this reality? It was our body. Our body is our very first possession. I'm in possession of this body. Me, my name is Aaron. This is the name my parents gave me. Eschenberg is my father's last name, Aaron Michael Eschenberg. My parents gave me this name. I am spirit. I am fire energy. I am, I am spirit. But this body is how I connect here on the physical world of planet Earth. This is how I connect with other human beings here on planet Earth. Uh, we are spiritual and we are physical beings. And because the energy of this eclipse has a lot to do with Taurus, where the North Node was, started back in December 21st, 2021, or December 28th, 2021, something like that. The end of December 2021, South Node was over there in Scorpio. You know, so, so I, my material, my first possession I ever received was this body. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for, for bringing my spirit into this body. And this body, let me come back here to the chart, because this is our and multiple other things. My body consists of multiple organisms. Okay? My body, there are multiple organisms. My heart, my spleen, my kidneys, my eyes, the brain. All of these things are, are functioning almost independently, yet at the same time they're functioning together as in unity for this 
human experience to exist, for this physical body to exist on this planet. All of these things have to be in functioning, working order, specifically my brain, my lungs, and my heart. And we can take away one of those three things and we can still live, but we can't take away two of those things and still live, you know. Um, so these are the fundamental aspects of, of having a human body. So on the, on the other side of Taurus, the water energy, water is my blood, but it's also our emotions. It's our emotions. Where this physical earth, Taurus energy, is my physical body. The Aries energy is going to be my fire, my spirit. And then the air energy over in Libra, air, we're all collectively breathing. We're all collectively one in this. Uh, my breath, your breath, it's, it's one. We are one in this, right? So we have this oppositions, Mercury, Mars, and the sun opposing abundance abundance in our physical bodies. So we're not just talking about our homes, we're talking about our physical bodies and breakthroughs in our physical bodies, joy in our physical bodies, happiness in our physical bodies. And this opposition, opposition is a tug of war between these polarities, these opposites that attract one another, earth and water, my physical, my emotional, this is saying that I, the hero of the story, is the sun. I am the sun. I am the center of my universe, respectfully. You are the center of your universe. So where the sun, where the hero is showing up in our story, we, you, myself, all of us collectively here on earth, we have to show up in the shadow world. Similar to where, you know, I went on Saturday night, ayahuasca. It's, this is the light and it is the darkness. It is the shadows. And then within these shadows, we find light. And this is saying Mars. Mars is home here, not only in Aries, but home in Scorpio. Mars rules or is assigned and associated with both Aries and Scorpio, where we take the initiative, my initiative and my emotions is what's playing out here right now throughout November of 2023 and Mercury which is associated with Gemini and Virgo it's about my information collective information the facts facts and all the possibilities and with our mind and Mars and ourselves showing up in this space and with this loose conjunction to the south node of releasing and letting go in this place of others Okay, what this, is, what this is trying to tell us is we have a lot of work to do of releasing emotions that are connected with other people. This is certainly something I talked about on Saturday. But we have a lot of this stuff to let go of. Emotions, we have to drive forward with releasing these emotions for the health of our physical bodies. And see, that's something very different than what I talked about on Saturday for our physical bodies to be healthy, for our physical bodies to receive this breakthrough, for our physical bodies to receive abundance. We must understand that emotionally, we connect like a magnet with other people's frequencies, other people's energies. And this is saying clearing clearing, clearing this, this energy with the South Node and clearing everything that's, you know, a lot of things that have gone on from uh, end of 2021 through now and November of 2023, releasing other people's emotions, releasing other people's projections onto us. My spirit self, where the North Node, and I'm going to come back for a quick second, where the spirit self is North Node right now, connecting with Chiron, the wounded healer. In mythology, Chiron uh, is a centaur similar to Sagittarius, and it hurt his leg in a in a centaur trap <laughs> and and he learned all these healing modalities never could heal himself but became this master healer and shared his gifts to the world i kind of associate chiron with virgo energy uh, because it's, it's the healer it's the nurse of the zodiac and the, and the asteroid belt which i certainly put here in virgo that's maybe me uh, neither neither less venus is there right now making sure that we're taking care we're playing the nurse 
the nurse to ourselves, the nurse to those that we can support, the people that we can support and, and be there for and offer love and care where we can, right? We're all a nurse. We're all a doctor in our own ways. Uh, we're all helpers here on this planet. We're all wanting to help in one way or another. And specifically, you know, something I talked about on Saturdays, we think about other people's problems to avoid thinking about my own. And right now, this is saying focus now, focus, focus on our issues that we have with other people. Because it's not only playing an effect on our mentality, it's playing effect on our physical bodies. And our physical bodies can, can attract ailments, disease. When disease first shows up to the body, it shows up in the auric field. It shows up in the electromagnetic field before it hits the physical body. And yes, this can be brought on. There is no universe without mind entering into it first. So it's important imperative right now that we're clearing out the emotions that we're carrying on, the baggages like we talked about on Saturday, the baggages, the colostomy bag that we carry around with ourselves that we're just slapping around everywhere. Now I'm going to get a little bit deeper into this. Okay, because this, this the eclipse also dealt with Neptune here in Pisces. And it's forming this, this quink unks here to the south node right now. Quink unks, that green dotted line that's coming over here to Neptune. That's a 512th aspect. It's something that's it's a challenge to see. It's our, it's our proverbial uh, blind spot in astrology. You know, the opposition is right here in front of me. The square is something right here to my left. I can see it. But that blind spot. We're not, this is something that's difficult to see. So this is why I'm excited to share with you right now. And where are we harboring feelings of religion? Because Neptune and Pisces certainly deal with religious beliefs and our belief system. And I can say myself, and I know many other people that I know and talk to have had a lot of issues with religion and religions being forced upon us, religions being... Um, there to support and help people, but at the same time doing some pretty nasty things along the way. And myself as a, a, an astro theologer, right? I, I believe in the Ark of the Covenant, this, this arcing agreement that we've all looked at that says in the age of Aries was Judaism. The age of Christianity is Pisces. We're in the age of Aquarius where these other religions, we should be adapting and moving forward. And what's happening here is the dogma from these other religions, Judaism, Christianity, and, and, and everything else that's going on, we're not moving forward anymore. Where we had an agreement at one point in time and said, hey, this is, this is, this is sun worship. Let's call a duck a duck and a goose a goose. That's what this all is, is sun worship. This is why... Moses came down with the stone tablets and he got mad and he destroyed the stone tablets because everyone was worshiping Taurus the bull. And Moses represented the age of Aries, the ram's horn, the lamb of God, the lamb of the world. Then we had a, an epidemic during this time where we had to make blood sacrifices, blood sacrifices to free ourselves of sin to get forward to move forward, to have a godly connection. When the Christians, Constantine and the others, got together to write the new age of Pisces, they understood that this was a serious problem. So when they created the astral, promorphized personification of Jesus, the sun that lights the world, the sun and its 12 disciples, if you believe this story, my friends, you no longer have to slaughter a lamb. You no longer have to kill a sheep. You no longer have to make a blood sacrifice because God, the supreme creator, the, the unity that created all of this and all of us, has made its sacrifice of our only son, the only son. Now, this son truly does give its light and life for us as sons have a finite lifespan. This son is burning and giving its light so we can all live and survive here on planet Earth. So the astrologers, the religious individuals during this time understood this and wrote it in. And there's many, many 
astrological references in the Bible. And here we are in this new age of Aquarius, where myself, Mr. Astrotheology, Micah Dank, Manly P. Hall, there's many, there's many astrotheologers that were trying to navigate, were in the first deacon, the first 70 years of a 2,150 year cycle of the age of Aquarius. And we're figuring it out. And that's why it's extremely challenging right now. We're all going through these interesting challenges, these difficulties in ourselves, in our lives, where people are holding on to an old age. People are holding on to an old identity, an old dogma that doesn't fit the times where we are at. And we are certainly in the age of technology and information and community, which I'm reaching you right now. I, I don't even know how many... I don't know how you guys find this video. I don't know how many of you I've met in real life. And I wish I could hope to meet all of you at one point in real life. You know, but this is certainly this age of technology. We're certainly in this age of Aquarius and we can see the, the effects. We can see the confirmation all around us, you know, that we are certainly in this age. And we're navigating and trying to figure out this new age, trying to figure out, you know, spirituality almost denounces all religion. Well, it's just like, well, this, this is still, we don't have to have the dogma to understand this. And there's going to be lessons every single day, every single week, every single month when we look up at the sky and we look at these planets and when we understand the relationship to these planets and the messages that they're trying to share to us. And I am a firm believer that all priests, rabbis, whatever, whatever they're, they're in a sense are doing the same thing, but we've lost this. We've lost looking at the planets. We've lost looking at the star clusters. We've lost looking at the constellations to, to be able to tell these stories. And we only look at the book itself, you know, be it being that book of uh, the Torah or the book of uh, the Bible or whatever your religion or the religion may be that's out there. And we're trying to navigate because there's a lot of frustrations in breaking away. You know, I get called an antichrist or an atheist, which I am neither. The Ark of the Covenant, this arcing agreement, right? This arcing agreement that ties in all of the religions. We all believe in God. You know, like Ricky Gervais says, there's over 2,000 gods in recorded history. Christians believe in one God, Ricky doesn't believe in any God, so that means Christians denounce 1,999 gods where he denounces 2,000. Uh, I, I believe I take a bit of a pantheistic approach in, in, in my spirituality, in my understanding of this world, that God is everything. Uh, I forget who makes the quote, I might even say this on, on Saturday's uh, astrology talk, that man worships an invisible God while destroying a very visible and real nature. Now here we are, this Taurus energy, abundance and breakthroughs, realizations, this body is godly, this earth around us is God, all of these plants exist, all of the insects exist to create the plants, the plants exist to create oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide, these trees, we have a beautiful relationship with this and all of these things exist for us to exist, human beings to exist, the prefrontal cortex of the brain, right? We are the, the crowning achievement down here on planet Earth. And we have a, a, a very disgusting view that humans are the bad guys. Humans are the enemy of Earth. Well, if we treat it like it's not godly, that's our own undoing. So all of these plants exist, all of these animals exist, and for then one plant and one, an one animal to exist, it has to have its counterpart. And then we have these predators, and those predators have to exist to keep an equal balance, equal, right? And that's what all the zodiac is all about. This whole wheel of astrology is about balance. Us and them, my emotions, your emotions, my personal thoughts and beliefs, your personal thoughts and beliefs, our collective thoughts and beliefs, uh, you know, uh, 
my expression, how I express myself, collectively how we're expressing ourselves. You know, this is, if I go around the zodiac, right, this is me and us and mine and ours and my thoughts and collective thoughts and then my emotions and our, you know, we can almost see this as a little different here, uh, business to, to personal, um, my, my experience expression, my creative expression, our creative expression, my services, and then our belief system. So it's, it's, it's all about balance, this wheel. And where are we, this is where we have to do the shadow work. Where are we harboring feelings and emotions? Where are we harboring feelings and emotions that could be from a religious standpoint, where we say, I'm angry about this religion, or I'm angry about this. And we don't all have to move forward with the times like I'm talking about here. People can and are clearly staying in with the old times. Now, back in the Bible days, Moses went on a, a murder spree when people were worshiping the golden calf. A murder spree because they weren't catching up with the new times. You are not ready for this new information. You're not ready to receive this. We're going to kill everyone who's still worshiping the old age. Now, over here, let me see if I can pull this up. Oh, I'm going to come to the chart. This is interesting information. I don't want to get in trouble saying this, but we have interesting energy. Where is Eris? Eris, the goddess of discord. There you are. Get in there. Select. Eris has been now in Aries for over a hundred years and is strongly conjunct the North Node. The North Node right now is telling us to go in this direction, follow our spirit, listen less to other people. It doesn't matter. This, this, this validation through others has got to come to a stop. I don't care. It doesn't matter if somebody else thinks I'm handsome or unattractive or tall and lanky or in good shape or if you look at me and, and judge and project that I'm a privileged white man or if I'm just some dude sitting in his basement making astrology videos. It doesn't matter to me. I have to have security within myself, within my own spirit, within my own body. I have to be secure with who I am. And if there's something that I don't like about myself, can I change it? Do I want to make improvements on something? If I'm not in good shape, I have to work hard. Use that energy of emotions that I'm unsatisfied with to create something different. Exercise, get more health, or lose weight, or do something, whatever it may be. Right, but we have to be secure within ourselves and releasing the external validation. It doesn't matter, you know, my, my parents have their own religious beliefs and their own dogmatic ideas. And I've talked with them about all of this stuff and to the point where it's it doesn't matter. My my conversations and and will fall on deaf ears. And respectfully, they're what they're trying to share with me, I have to re reject it because of my teachings and my understandings, you know, Jesus is not my personal savior that I have to, that's me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to believe in the dogma that my parents believe for me to have a good relationship with them. We don't have to think alike. We don't have to all fit into the same category. We don't all have to fit into this same pigeonholed idea that of life, of whatever, of whatever way it may be. You know, and there's, there's all of this, there's all kinds of debates right now over the religious debates, the debates on what is a man, what is a woman on, on, uh, you know, trans. And it's just like, sometimes it's like, if we don't, if they say, well, no, I have, a, I have my own belief system here. Well, then we get projected and you're a bigot and you're a racist and you're this and this and this. And it's just like, that's not up. And if that's what you want to call somebody, that's up to them. Right. We don't have to identify with that. We can just simply appreciate and love and move forward, right? It doesn't matter who we love, how we love, how we dress, how we look. It's about your own creative self-expression and how you want to manifest your physical being down here on this planet. And this energy is saying bringing abundance and joy and breakthrough to our physical beings down here on this planet, letting go of the emotions that others are projecting onto us and 
healing ourselves. North node Chiron and Chiron Eris. Now, let's talk about this Eris. Eris, goddess of discord. The goddess of discord came down to the seven muses, the seven goddesses on this planet Earth, whatever. This is mythology. I don't believe this story is real. Um, it's just a story. So, but these stories help guide us. So that's another thing. Like I, I can, I can appreciate the stories of Christ. I can appreciate the stories of Buddha. I can appreciate the stories of Krishna. I can appreciate the stories of Judaism. That doesn't mean I have to follow or worship them. It doesn't mean I have to go to their belief system and identify with or call myself one of them. I am me. I am my own unique individual self. And I am capable and able to discern and decipher information that comes to me and gravitate toward what I enjoy and, and likewise go away from what I don't like. And that's okay. So the goddess of discord comes down with an apple that says to the most beautiful one and places it in the center of these seven muses, the seven most beautiful goddesses that, that bring life and gifts and all of these things to the world. And then they start fighting over who deserves the apple. Who's the most beautiful one? Who's the most beautiful one? The most beautiful one wouldn't have to fight over it. Because they are all unique goddesses. They all have their own... And I, forgive me, I don't remember what each goddess's gifts were. I know Persephone would be like the one that would touch everything. And, and it would turn to like, you know, it would flower and blossom and whatnot and Persephone was who Hades the lord of the underworld Hades would take again this is mythology friends like Hades would take Persephone to the underworld and Mercury King Jupiter as the story goes King Jupiter had to get Mercury who Mercury is the only one that can go in between both worlds the physical world the non-physical world which is our minds, which our minds go in between the physical world and the non-physical world. I'm communicating with you right now through the physical world. The insight I got earlier today was the non-physical, 100%, right? It was an intuition. It was a download. Um, so Mercury, so Jupiter sent Mercury or uh, Hermes uh, to, to strike a deal with Hades or Pluto, the lord of the underworld. And... That was to allow Persephone to spend six months above and six months below. Well, six months above here. This is summer and, uh, you know, spring and summer. And then this would be autumn and winter as this is a giant mirror. So this is half in the upper world and half in the down world. Now, of course, we're just talking about the sun, you know, the sun's trajectory, the sun's or, or really the earth's trajectory around the sun and its own elliptical uh, motion that it does and now we're experiencing autumn it snowed last night for the very first time here in metro detroit not too heavily thankfully but it's snowing winter's coming right so striking a deal with 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 the lord of the underworld to be able to create this thing nonetheless there's there's another six other sisters that she has and they all do something just as beautiful right so eris is the goddess of discord and right now it's in aries conjunct the north node Aries, of course, dealt with Judaism. This is the age of Judaism. And if my memory serves properly, there's been a war happening about where God came down here to earth and touched down on earth. And this place, this rock, this mountain was considered the holiest of the holies. And we have individuals fighting for a very long time over who deserves that land, the holiest of holies. This is, to a T, the goddess of discord. Because there is nothing holy, nothing sacred about how it's being done right now. How we're going about that. If we find this to be a sacred space, a holy space, holy place on earth. <laughs> We don't need to fight. We don't need to go to war. So where are we going to war? You know, and let me, let me, let me step back here for a second. It's like I see a lot of Americans even, and, and to have your own view and opinions is a wonderful thing. 
to not have a view and opinion is also a wonderful thing. And to be able to step back and understand it's not something we need to get involved in is also extremely powerful. It's a culture that most of us don't know, that most of us don't understand. Um, when I, and I'm going to share this too, this is really interesting. I was working with some Chaldeans earlier this year, and this is really, really powerful. Since I was a little kid, Saddam Hussein was a bad guy. Saddam Hussein was a bad guy. That's what the news told me. That's what, that's what the reporters on TV said. That's what my, my parents were to talk about, you know, and how he's an awful dictator. And until I heard this perspective, this worldly perspective through these Chaldeans that I was working with earlier this year, that said, we love Saddam. Saddam was a hero. And then when our producer asked, well, why is that? Can you explain? Can you go further? And they said, well, Saddam was the only one that could keep these two parties, which hated each other, at peace. Now, I'd never heard anything like that before. I'd only been told what the news told me. I'd only, the only information I had, the only belief system I had, the only thing that I had to form an opinion on was what someone else gave to me what someone else implanted into my young mind. And it took 30 some years, I mean, I'm 40 years old. So I heard this information as a 40 year old man that, that these people loved Saddam because he was able to keep two parties at peace. And then what had happened after that, right? So we, we, have, we have a lot of news, a lot of media trying to convince us. This is something we talked about on the eclipse, the, the Libra solar eclipse, about manipulation, how people want to manipulate us to get our attention and to get our energy to focus on their cause. And it's a lot of ego. It's a lot of unnecessary manipulation because if I can get you ramped up and riled up about my thing, well, then I have an ally. I've got somebody more on my side. Where right now all the energy is suggesting it doesn't matter. I don't need somebody to believe in me about astrology. I don't need someone to believe astrotheology for me to have a conversation with. I don't need someone to believe me about my beliefs for me to be friends, for me to open up my arms and hug them. For me to understand that this is a human being that has emotions, that cries, that feels depression, that feels love, that feels anger, rage, humility. We all feel this stuff. And, and we're so judgmental right now, Venus and Virgo. We're so judgmental and we want to cling to an idea. We want to cling to and support a cause and we want to say, well, I, I don't want to be the one friend that stood out. I don't want to be the one friend that's not saying, yeah, I vote for Palestine or yeah, I vote for Israel or yeah, I, you know, it's like we, so we get caught up in something and, and we feel that we have to pick a stance, that we have to pick a side. I'm going to share something that happened to me when I was a young man. Um, I was raised Christian. I'm going to share a couple things right now, actually. I was raised Christian, Methodist. I don't, I don't go to church anymore. I don't, you know, I don't, uh, I'm thankful for the religions, but I, I don't identify with them anymore, right? Um, it's okay for me. And I feel at peace about that. I feel really good about that. And, but I'm thankful for the people that do and, and who, who do have a, a practice and that, that's a spiritual practice in whichever way it is, right? So my mom, my mom told me this story some couple years ago, how she really liked this guy when she was in school, but she was a Lutheran and he was a Protestant, something like that. And it just couldn't work out. And then, you know, she's divorced now. You didn't know, but she's divorced now many times over. <laughs> and, uh, and, and and she told me the story and I thought, well, that's, you know, I'm glad you met my dad. I'm thankful for my life, thankful for me, you know, thanks for creating me. But it's like almost kind of sad that we allowed or that, that at that time that this kind of religious, you're both Christian. You both believe in God. You both believe in Jesus. You both believe in the immaculate conception, uh, Mother Mary giving the virgin birth, right? Virgin Virgo, the virgin. This is the age of Christianity, Pisces over here, which means the earth was, of course, over here in Virgo. The Immaculate Conception, earth was giving birth to the sun here on December 25th after the winter solstice. 
and then Jesus meets John the Baptist, and Jesus meets the two fishermen brothers, and Jesus learns about himself, then Jesus works the field, and Jesus becomes a teacher at the age of 30, which is a Saturn return. And then the descent down, 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 you know, judgment and kissed by the scorpion, and then Pontius Pilate armed with spear, too. You know, this is the story. That's the story. So, you know, it's like they believe in the same story. They don't believe, you know, what I just shared, but they believe in the same story, but because they, they just had slightly different views within that same book, they couldn't, they couldn't identify, they couldn't work together. Now, when I was a little boy, my friend, my friend Travis, Travis Walker, I love you, buddy. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, he went to an interesting church where they would like speak in tongues and stuff. And they, they would like just like the, the, the pastor would, you know, he's like one of those guys like who wants it and ah, like the fire and ha ah, and, and then people would just stand up and la, 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 not making fun. They would just stand up and, and they, they would, you know, speak in tongues or whatever. It's, okay, that's very different from like the Methodist church I went to. Very, really cool. <laughs> and, and the guy would come along and he'd place your hands on people. Okay, this is, this is powerful. This is a powerful thing for me. Maybe it'll be powerful for you too. That's why I'm sharing this story. So they, they came to me and I was just like, yes, I'm standing up here and I'm ready. I wanted the, the, to feel the Holy Spirit. I wanted to, to feel this energy and be overwhelmed with the joy of God or whatever this, this feeling may be as I watch this guy touch people and they would almost seizure and fall over. So he comes over to me and my little, little Aaron is kind of excited for this and this guy puts his hand on my head and he starts like speaking, whether, whether he was praying or speaking in tongues, I don't really remember. Um, but you know, the Lord take this boy and ha ha. And I stood there and I'm just, and I was just waiting, just waiting to feel. I was open to receive, ready to feel the Holy Spirit fill my physical body up and lay me down and, and seizure like these other people did. And, and I stood there just waiting and nothing happened. And then I stood there a little longer, just waiting. All right, God, I'm ready. I'm ready, God, take me. I'm ready to feel this. Nothing happened. Then more people start putting their hands on me. Lord, take this boy, fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. And I felt embarrassed. Why am I not, why isn't God touching me? Why, why am I not being filled with this spirit? So what did I do? I didn't want to be left out. I didn't want to be the, the one standing there thinking, am I not worthy of God's love? Am I not worthy of this energy? Maybe it's all for this story right now. Because I stood there and felt nothing until I felt embarrassment that I wasn't receiving, that I didn't feel anything from these hands, from these people, for these prayers. So what did I do? I fell down. I fell down and I laid there as long as I could because I didn't want to be left out. I didn't want to be the one kid that stood there and just blinked at everyone and said, thanks, you know, thanks everybody. I guess God's not here for me today. I lied to myself. I lied to all those people in that moment because I didn't want to be the only one. Now there's a UAW strike happening. United Auto Workers are on strike around Metro Detroit, around all this area. And I, I beat my horn, I'm, I'm all for them, you know? Get what you deserve, get what you deserve. I hope you get it. You know, cars are expensive these days. The technology that goes into it's expensive, but I believe we're all worth a fair wage. The world is getting enormously more expensive and even my industry is taking a huge pay cut not only are the actors on strike and the writers are on strike but my me has I've had to take a pay cut since the pandemic and the world has just gotten extremely more expensive so why do I have to take a pay cut when everything is more expensive and that's just I have to suck it up and I make less money now than I did in 2018 which is weird so, um, you know, I'm all about these guys. Hey, get, get more money. These, these men and women, excuse me, these individuals, get, get your money. You know, I, I, hope you, I hope you get it. And I, you know, I beeped this one guy, I rolled down the window. I said, hey, man, I hope, I hope you get what you deserve. And he said, there's only one person. There's only one, there's only one person behind all this right now. I said, that's God. And that just made me think like, wow, where? You know, we are all God. 
God is all around us. And God is responsible for the war happening in the Middle East. God is responsible for the war that's happening in Germany in the 1940s. God is responsible for child leukemia, leukemia, cancer, all of these things. Now, I'm not angry at God. But we have this, you know, God is God. God is good. God is, God is responsible for all this. God is going to, and, and yeah, things are going to work out, but we have to take self-responsibility and self-accountability. We have to work hard and des- to get what we need, what we deserve for, right? That's why these people are on strike, to get what they need, to get what they deserve. But it's like, it's like you know, shit in one hand and wish in the other. Which is going to come out first? Which one are you going to receive? We can, we can manifest. We can sit here and think and pray. And these are all good things. Praying is a wonderful thing. And aligning our, our mental and our emotions together to try to project into the physical world something that we want to manifest, something that we want to create. I'm a huge fan of meditation. I'm a huge fan of prayer. They're one and the same thing. Same with giving thanks for food, putting your energy into something, just giving thanks. Thank you for the animal that's, that that's, life is ended for mine to continue. Thank you for these plants that blossomed every year. And now, you know, these plants are kind of done growing up here where I'm at. So it's now it's like, you know, harvesting is over. Now it's like, okay, well, what do we have left to, to survive through the winter time until come February and March? So there's a lot going on right now. There's a lot of disconnecting of emotions, disconnecting of ideas that that have been installed into us from our parents, installed into us from social media, installed into us from the news, from our peers, from religions. And I think the point of me talking about this is, is, is the one word and root is forgiveness. It's forgiveness. We don't have to identify with it. We can forgive. And the more that we forgive, the more that we alleviate the emotional baggage that we're carrying around with us, the better we can live in this physical body, our home. This, this, this is my home. You know, this, is temp- this one is very grateful for this home, but this, this is where I live. I live in my heart. I live in this body. So the more that I can release anger and frustration from peers, from other people, from the social political agenda that's happening, from all of the, the, the noise, the noise that's happening all around us on a daily basis of other people's fights and other people's struggles, which I care much about. But we all have our own fights. We all have our own struggles to go after. And, this is, and I'll say this, like I, I've, I've mentioned something like this before, but it seems relevant right now. It, when, when people try to get our attention and our focus to, to their agenda, I look at, you know, this is, this is I'm, a, I'm a farmer in Idaho, I've got potatoes in Idaho, and Maui's on fire, and you need me to leave my Idaho potatoes to go focus on Maui. And then there's projection happening that, Aaron, if you don't go work in Maui and help those farmers out, then you don't care. Those are projections. These are false ideas that somebody else is trying to put onto ourselves to make us fight for their fight. That doesn't mean we don't care. If I sit here and if I work hard at my garden, if I focus on my potatoes, I can supply these people potatoes. I can supply the world these nutrients. I can supply my community, my family, food and money to put, you know, to continue to put food on our table. And then the more that I put in and create abundance within my potato farm, my well, the things that I need to focus my attention to, then I'm going to have more time, value, uh, value and resources to send to Maui. But if I just say, okay, I've, I've got to follow that agenda and jump on this thing that's happening here in Maui, well, now my crops are done. I've got nothing to give. I'm pouring from an empty cup. You know, it's something I kind of talked about on Saturday, but perhaps in a a little bit different perspective. So it's like focusing on our own agenda is extremely important. And it's not, it's not bad, right? We're all manifested and we all have a goal. 
you know this person over here is like they 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 need flowers their flowers are their life and creating flowers and then come valentine's day or come the day you want to put flowers in your home they've created that service this person over here cattle farmer and they're they've got this so you have delicious beef if you need to you know and when you go out to the store and eat and this person over here is making bread and this person over here is making desks and wood and this person over here is making cameras we all have our own you know a specialty and skill and the more that we're focused on that and again, releasing the emotions, the little daggers that other people are kind of putting into us and where we need your time, where we need your attention, where we need your focus. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's okay. We don't have to be mad at them. They're just doing their thing too. You know, I don't want to be mad at the Jehovah's Witness coming over here and knocking on my door. It's all right. Thank you for your time. This is your belief system, and I'm going to just say thank you and close the door. I don't want to have to hold anger at them. I don't want to slam the door in their face. I don't want to try to teach them my perspective. It doesn't matter, you know. Unless they're open to receiving and they want to have a conversation, then I'm going to be open to that conversation. But I think the real, the real point in the meat here in, in this energy this month is really this, this, this place of forgiveness and seeing where we're harboring, where we're holding on to emotions, that just don't serve us, don't deserve us, like we talked about on Saturday. Where do we not deserve our, this time and attention? And can I let go of some of this emotional baggage that's potentially been brought on by religious dogmas and other people's belief systems that are, that are trying to affect and alter my personal state of being, my mind, and how I'm progressing and moving forward as an individual here with my own goals, my own ambitions, Again, it's not about turning a blind eye to everybody else. The more that I focus on mine, the more abundant I can be, the more I can give out. Yeah. So, my friends, I hope there was something in here for you. I hope you had a happy Halloween. I hope you find the forgiveness wherever it's necessary. And letting go and understanding as well, this goddess of discord. If we find something holy, let it be holy. And not go to war over something. Not have to. And that's... Uh, dangerous territory <laughs> you already know what i'm saying but i love you i wish you enough and we'll see you next time